Hey everybody, so my previous video demonstrated how you can test out RetroArch using existing games that are in your Hilo hack. Uh, the demonstration that I showed yesterday, as you can see here, had to do with Captain America and the Avengers. Now the core that I tested was MAME 2003. The one thing that I didn't explain is, well, how did you call to MAME 2003 when that file is not in the bin folder? So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Today I'm going to show you how to create your own core launcher if it's not included in that bin folder. So that's what we're going to do. You need um, some sort of a source code editor. Uh, I wouldn't recommend any kind of a simple text editor or a text editing tool that's on your current uh, desktop. So use something that's set up for source code. So there's three I'm going to give you three different options. The one that I recommend is Visual Studio Code, which is right here. It actually works, uh, it's multi-platform, works on Windows, uh, Mac, and Linux, and possibly some others. I don't know. I don't know if there's more. But um, th this is the one that I've been using, and it works. And it really, you're just doing a simple edit, so you don't really need to know any of the other features that it has, I don't really know. I don't know what other features it has and why it's so great. It just worked, so and it's free, so that's all that mattered to me. Another option would be a Sublime Text. That's also multi-platform and will work uh, and do the essentially the exact same thing. If you're a Windows user and don't like to get multi-platform things, there's Notepad++. So Notepad is familiar to Windows users. This is Notepad++. This is also a, you know, a software that'll do the exact same thing. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go into Visual Studio Code. What we're gonna do is create a new launcher. So by that, what I'm talking about is if you look at your, inside your binary in your RetroArch folder and you go into bin, that's where all those core launchers are at, right? So when I demonstrated the Sega CD example, I called to this folder and Sega CD. Yesterday's example, I called to this folder and MAME 2003, but I didn't show you how, how that got there, right? So you're gonna learn how to make that today and that's what this is all about. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into Let's say you're using Visual Studio Code. You're just going to open up a file. So I'm going to open up. Um, I'm going to use Sega CD as an example. So there's Sega CD. I'm going to open it. And there it is right there. So this has a lot of information. There's some code in here. A lot of, a lot of instructions. And honestly, I don't know what it all means. I mean, you can look at some of the things. It has to do with video or whatever. I would just say don't touch any of that. Don't touch it. Don't mess with it. Don't screw it up because that's important, right? But what you are going to do is you're going to have to make one edit and it has to do with this final line right here. So if you notice, this one's called Sega CD, but down here, the core that we're using is Pico Drive. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that. Um, let's see if we can check this out. So you go into RetroArch and your cores so these are all the cores that are in that in the binary right now that's on GitHub. There's a lot more cores that you can download and get, and there's actually links and information on how to do that. Uh, but looking at the cores that you have, there's several that aren't actually already set up. In other words, there's other cores that are in here that aren't necessarily in your bin file uh, right here. So the only thing that was there is MAME 2003. However, um, if you look at the other one, it's, uh, there's other cores, right? So you have MAME 2000, MAME 2003+, plus, MAME 2010, MAME 2014, and there's various cores that are in here that might not be represented in that bin file. So we're going to learn how to make that, okay? So I guess I'll go ahead and leave this here so you can see that. Um, so again, this is called Sega CD. But the core that's being used to run Sega CD is Pico Drive. So if you look over here, there's Pico Drive underscore Libretro dot so. So you can call it whatever you want, but when it comes to editing your um, your core launcher, 
you have to make sure that you're calling out to the actual core name. All right. So this was Pico Drive. Let's go ahead and use another example. Um, if you look at Neo Geo Pocket. So the core for Neo Geo Pocket is Mednafin underscore NGP underscore Libretro. The, the, the core launcher is called NGP. Easy enough to remember, Neo Geo Pocket. But when it comes to this final line and you're going to launch the core, you have to use the core name. So the core name is going to be everything before that last underscore Libretro. So if you look at the one for Neo Geo Pocket, it's called Mednafin, and here it is right here, Mednafin underscore NGP, and then underscore Libretro. So right here, it's RetroArc underscore launch space. And then right here is where you're actually going to, where you would type out the name of the core. And in this case, it's Mednafin underscore NGP. You're not going to mess with this dollar sign one. You're not going to mess with this RetroArc underscore launch. So I already have a MAME 2003 uh, core launcher. So let's go ahead and make a MAME 2000 core launcher. So I'll use this MAME 2003 as an example. Again, I'm, it's going to be MAME 2000 because that's the name of the core prior to the underscore Libretro. <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to change this. This is a super easy edit. I'm just going to change this to a zero there. So that's MAME 2000. Then I'm going to save it as MAME 2000. There it is. Save it. So now you can see that it's there in my folder. So now I have a MAME 2000 core launcher, a MAME 2003, and the, along with all the others that were part of the binary release. So I'm going to use another example just to show you. So here's the one for NES. It's called NES. I'll go ahead and close this one out. So it's called NES. But the core that launches it is F-C-E-U-M-M. -M. And that's right here, that F-C-E-U-M-M -M underscore Libretro dot S-O. So RetroArc underscore launch, that's always going to be the command because this is the command to actually launch the core. So this is launch the core, core name, right? And the core name is always going to be the one prior to the underscore Libretro part of the name or the file. So this one's called F-C-E-U-M-M. -M. You can't change that because that's the name of the core. So you need to keep that the same. All right. So let's try, let's look at uh, PCFX because they're here, there's two of them. Okay. There's Mednafin Super Graphics Libretro at Mednafin Super Graphics Libretro 1. So that's just a backup file. That really doesn't need to be there. You can delete it. It's just, you know, it's a different uh, version probably or something. But, but we're looking at this one here. So let's go ahead and look at uh, PCFX. So this is PCFX. That's the name of the file. And right down here, it's RetroArc underscore launch. And sure enough, Mednafin underscore super graphics. It's a long name. So you got to make sure to get all that right. And then it's got the space and then dollar sign uh, and the one. So your core needs to be consistent to what the core file is called all up until you get to that underscore Libretro. You skip that part, but it's the name. The name is prior to that underscore Libretro. OK, so this has to be consistent with what your core title is, what your core file is called. What you save it as and what you call it is all up to you, whatever is easy for you. You can call it anything you want. So that's it. That's how you would make your own core file or your core launcher using a source code editor. And in this case, I'm using uh, Visual Studio Code. So hopefully you'll be on your way making more uh, core launchers and testing out more games. And uh, have a good time doing it. <laughs>